As a web or UX designer, there is a very frequent problem that you're likely to encounter when designing various assets like websites, print materials, or even user interfaces. You have to present boring information in an interesting way while making everything understandable. And that's a challenge because this is a very challenging combination to implement. And sometimes one part of this challenge is contradictory to the other. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can make your screenshots more interesting. And we're going to use an example of this. So a very frequent uh, request or like task that you might do is do like horizontal cards or bullet points or otherwise present some information that uh, also may be in the form of a screenshot in a way that maybe highlights a certain part or just you know conveys the whole idea in in general so what i do is first of all you usually get you know this screenshot that you can use then you can paste that inside of your container for the image right so this is one way to do it you could simply let's say this is going to be a bullet point or a horizontal card about a screenshot so this is one way to do it and it it's not bad but it's not i think interesting enough for anybody to really pay attention to right you know what i mean so what I think is really good to do is somehow use this boring screenshot and do a few simple steps to make it a bit more interesting. So let's say that there's a certain part of the screenshot that we want to highlight. Let's say that we are going to be highlighting these last few words, capture contents on the screen. So what you could do is simply duplicate this screenshot right within this frame and then press option and double click the image to enter crop mode. When you enter this mode, you then adjust these boundaries of the image to basically just show uh, a tiny part of the overall screenshot uh, with the information that you want to highlight in the middle. So in our case, that's going to be capture contents on the screen in the very middle, and then I'm going to press enter. So now we have a separate part that's, you know, more important than the rest. And then you can use the scale tool by pressing K on my keyboard and then scale it up to really to be placed in a way that shows clearly what is a major piece of information you should be paying attention to. So, and when you do that, one thing happens. What happens now is that the person knows what to focus on. So they're less likely to tune out. They're more likely to pay attention because you clearly provide a visual hierarchy in, in a way where you simply make the more important information bigger, right? It's a very common strategy and something that you want to implement every time you design stuff. Uh, so, but the problem is that it's not really apparent at the first glance, right? So what you want to do then is add an effect that's going to differentiate or increase the contrast between the figure and the background, which in this case is, I think the best way to do this is use a shadow. So as you can see, what I'm doing right now is I am using a very soft shadow, very, you know, subtle, uh, very strong blur on this shadow to, to create depth in this screenshot. And then what I can do also is around these corners, which I tend to do almost always. And then maybe even if I really want to highlight this, I can go to the stroke settings and then I can create a stroke for this. For example, create a radial gradient. Maybe that's going to improve the readability of this. Who knows? You have to try this out and see for yourself. So in this case, I think this is quite nice or we could try white. But the problem is you can't really see white uh, on, on white background. So we can't really make this work. We could use like a blue color or something. Just highlight this very subtly in, in a way that is uh, that further increases contrast between the main object and the background. All right. So here you go. And uh, we could make this even uh, we could make this very subtle or we could turn it off altogether. It all depends on a very specific uh, on the specific layout you're working with. In this case, as you can see, I'm struggling to make this work because we get this is already uh, contrasting enough. But if we move the shadow, for example, if we, you know, focused on the bottom part of this screenshot with this shadow, you could then see that the top of this image is not as strongly differentiated, in which case a stroke like this could help, honestly, right? That could help. So let me just do this. I'm going to actually use the black color uh, and yeah, this could work. So we could do something like this, for example, 
right? Or make it very subtle like 0.5 or use it on the bottom rather to create a kind of an edge, right? So a lot of fermenting needed to make this work. Okay, and now when you need to adjust what's actually shown in this part of the screenshot is you simply select it again, double click this again with holding the option key or alt and then just move stuff around. You can even make, make it bigger like this. You can do this for example and then just adjust these, uh, these corners, these edges. Right? And now you can see that immediately this visual is way more interesting than before, at least for me personally. Uh, it's still quite, it looks still quite boring, but I think it's a step in the right direction. So I'm also playing around with the background color to make it a bit more interesting. I'm just gonna create uh, a before image to compare the results. So I'm gonna remove this one and then this background is going to be like gray, like with transparency. So as you can see immediately, what's the difference? You get a different background with, uh, with a gradient, which in itself is more visually interesting so that definitely helps then you get this highlight so that's even more interesting and we could even take this one step further by using a plugin called skew that so i'm gonna launch that plugin and then just use this horizontal skew to be like minus 14 something like that apply and then i'm gonna just play around with the shadow because it got moved a little bit so i'm just gonna smaller and we can create this effect where a part of the screenshot looks as if it's floating above the rest which is definitely something that's easy to notice hard to miss and just overall i think interesting we can also adjust this so that really shows just this simple line also definitely a possibility and then we could just take this move it over here and then just rotate that like this let's say and yeah i think this is way better so we could even then duplicate this and then remove the image fill and add a color fill that would be black with transparency of like 10 and then move that below the first one um, so i honestly have no idea why this works what this is supposed to be but i have noticed that when you actually put objects into the background when you actually create more fake stuff on the screen that it actually helps to this for example helps the user to differentiate which objects are the main characters and which objects are you know the stuff you should not be paying attention to yeah as you can see here's the before and the after state information wise both of these are quite boring but one of these is, I'm gonna bet, is gonna get a better engagement from your users and one of them is definitely more interesting to look at and just easier to digest. And honestly, there is no limit to what you can do. You can then add colors. You could even like sample the color from the screenshot, which could be the one right here, for example. And